Now that the Arrowverse is officially dead and gone, good riddance, I decided to take a look back at the entire Arrowverse series or the saga and rank them the best to the absolute worst at the bottom of the list coming in at number seven batwoman i wanted to like this show i was curious to get to know the batwoman character i was only vaguely familiar with her from the comics and i thought this was the perfect opportunity for the arrowverse to use a bat character since they didn't have permission to use the man himself to use batman i thought well, why not? Why not use another character who hasn't gotten any love in live action and isn't that well known as far as a wider fan base? So let's use this. They even cast Ruby Rose, which I thought was smart on paper because she had a huge fan base of people outside of this who were willing to watch almost anything this chick would do. The problem is that she sucked as an actress. <laughs> she was terrible. She was awful. And maybe she could have gotten better. Maybe in time she could have been something. But she was not ready to carry a show. She was not ready for this position. And also allegedly not able to be a, a good employee obviously a lot of drama went on which is why ruby rose left after the first season or got fired depending on what you listen to but either way i stopped watching this show about two episodes into season two i said okay i don't really like where they're going even though season one was bad it wasn't like season one was good i did find her sister alice somewhat interesting but a lot of the side characters and a lot of everything else i thought was bad just bad season two once they brought in a new character ryan wilder nothing against the actress i actually think that actress much better than ruby and probably would have been a better fit from day one but i just couldn't find myself to add more hours of a shitty show to my life coming in at number six black lightning and this hurts putting it this low i had to put it this low mostly because i stopped watching as well Season one was really good, actually. They had a lot of good stuff going on. I like Jefferson Pierce as this person who used to be Black Lightning or has been Black Lightning for a long time, but now he's more of a family man. CW shows don't usually go for an older character as the main lead, somebody who is a father or has a family. I thought this was a different approach, and him being a black man dealing with racism going on sure some people are going to say woke <laughs> but i'm going to say it was refreshing having a different point of view in the arrowverse and dc universe the issue is that after the first season it seemed like which is the case for a lot of cw dc shows they don't really know what to do and they kind of maybe they get overwhelmed maybe the producers the writers they figure well shit the first season we had time to plan this out the uh, well thought out well conceived plot and how to pace certain things that happens throughout the season but once you get to season two or three and everything becomes backlogged and they're on this tight schedule and they're rushing to catch up i just thought the the issues weren't nearly as compelling. A lot of forced drama going on with the characters. And by season three, I checked out. Number five, Supergirl. And this is another show that I'm sad to put this low on the list because I actually did finish this all the way out. I did watch all, was it six seasons? Yeah, I think it was six seasons. Because I like Supergirl in general as a character, like Kara, I like her, and I like her being the cousin of Superman, so her having to kind of live up to those shoes and those standards of what everybody thinks so highly of Superman, her having to kind of do the same thing but different. Melissa Benoist, she was great casting-wise and performance-wise. I blame nothing on her, and some of the side characters I didn't even mind, but 
that first season was rough. <laughs> you know, a lot of the cliches, a lot of the bad writing seemed like they went for more of a TV sitcom approach. Granted, by the time season two came along and it went over to the CW, I thought it did some stuff better as far as integrating with the other universe. Then once they started to fuck with Lena Luthor and they toyed with making her a villain, but then they decided against it. it seemed like they didn't know what the hell to do with her. And a lot of the side characters, I don't want to say that this show became more of an agenda show because I'm not somebody who yells about politics being into shows. I try to just take it as face value or take it as how is it being used in the story. But this probably compared to the other shows the most did seem like they were taking more of a stance. And hey, more power to you. But sometimes you don't always want to see that in your entertainment. Number four, The Flash. And if you go off of my reviews or reactions to the first two seasons, this is shocking to be all the way down at number four because The Flash was amazing. The Flash was great. That season one finale, I'll forever talk about how I was in tears when Barry was confronted with his mother and her death and having to relive that and let it happen. Like, what great writing, what great acting. This was so good. It pains me that a show can start off on such a high, have such a strong villain in Reverse Flash, reduced to some of the laziest, shittiest, and corniest type stuff that came later on. It's mostly the fall, the drop in quality is why I have this so low. And by the time you get to the final season, by the time you get to the end and how bad it was and how rushed and thrown together the finale was, uh, this showrunner, Eric Wallace, needs to be excommunicated from the business for taking a show that had such promise, that had such potential, that had a built-in fan base and reduce it to the shit that it later on would become. Number three, Arrow. Another show that I can almost rinse and repeat the same exact thing that I just said about The Flash. I think Arrow hurts as much, if not more, because it was the first. It was the beginning. It did start all of this universe. This universe is titled the Arrowverse for a reason. Stephen Amell coming in and that dark, serious tone that the first season was. It This felt so refreshing to have a show that not only wasn't dealing with teenage crap, but it was about a dude dealing with some adult, serious things. A guy who was stranded on an island for five years, and so he had horrible PTSD. He was so screwed up over it, and then he basically was their Batman, right? They couldn't have Batman. So you had Oliver Queen going out there. He was the rich playboy billionaire type, but also he went out there and he was rough and gruff and, and violent when he had to be. He was willing to kill. This show also set up the tone and set the blueprint for what every other show ended up doing after the fact where you had the one hero that ended up having some friends and colleagues and eventually built out a team for better or for worse every show after that ended up having their own team of some sort look back at the beginning and see characters like thea his sister and roy and in laurel lance and tommy like there was a lot of good stuff going on season three is where you start to see some issues Right, seeing Oliver and Felicity as a couple, which hey, the fans asked for it, the fans are to blame, <laughs> and they listen. The writers listen, they put them together, and that's where the downfall of the show began. And then, season four, the, the, the worst season possibly of any of the other shows, but then they introduced other side characters that I didn't care about, like Mr. Terrific and Wild Dog. Boy, did I not like that guy. And then we just kept going on with so many horrible villains like Diaz. It's disappointing that it felt like they were mostly setting up a crisis on Infinite Earths. They were setting up the crossover more so than giving the Green Arrow, Stephen Amell, Oliver Queen character a proper send off. At number two, might be a little controversial, but Legends of Tomorrow. And I know a lot of people won't agree with this. For some people, Legends of Tomorrow is their worst. 
show in the universe because it did end up being a goofy and silly show. I'm not denying that. I'm not arguing that. And honestly, the first season was rough. The first season I don't love really at all. I think the first season has plenty of issues. It tried to kind of just do the same thing that Arrow and The Flash were doing, but failed in a lot of ways. It wasn't until season two, and especially season three, when Sarah Lance's character ended up taking over the team. And when they decided, instead of being so ultra serious, instead of trying to be like another Arrow, let's be the funny show. Let's be the goofy show. And I get that if the humor doesn't work for you, if the humor didn't work for you, if you just thought this was over the top and silly and couldn't get into it, I understand. But for me, the writing has never always been the strongest for some of these shows, so you might as well lean into the silliness. You might as well have fun with it. And I think this show, Legends, did the best job of making that work and making that make sense. The fact that this show was able to take advantage of being able to swap out characters and actors over the years, so if anything ever happened, you could just bring in new characters. I think the team... By the last few seasons was some of the best of the characters that they had. And I had more fun with Legends than I did for any other show. It, it severely sucks that they never got their final season. Never got a proper send-off, a proper conclusion. But for the number one, best show in the Arrowverse. And maybe technically it's not in the Arrowverse anymore. But I'm still going to say Superman and Lois because when Superman and Lois was first introduced, when these two actors came in to play these roles, they were on Supergirl. Both of them came in on Supergirl, connected to Supergirl, and then their show spun off. So sure, I, I get that they've undone that, they've changed that, they've disassociated themselves from it. It's really because the Arrowverse got so bad that they didn't want to be connected to it. And I completely get it. Believe me, I would have done the same thing. Just the idea of Superman and Lois being parents, I think is a great way to turn this relationship and these characters in a new direction. Something we've never seen before because they have been done over and over again. I do like seeing them in this light. And sure, maybe the sons, especially Jordan, can be whiny, can be annoying, and do have their moments of that make you roll your eyes. It It's more so seeing how Clark deals with that as a father, Lois deals with that as a mother. And yes, they've done with some crazy multiverse stuff in the first two seasons, but the third season, really strong. The third season, being about Lois having cancer, being about Superman doing anything and whatever it took to protect his kids. And I just thought the writing in season three was at its strongest and maybe some of the strongest out of all of the shows. And Superman and Lois is still going on. Thankfully, we're going to get a season four. So let me know in the comments below, what is your list? What is your favorite Arrowverse show? And what is your least favorite bottom of the barrel show thanks for watching like comment subscribe later oh yeah, yeah. today i feel super